Right, so today I've got something a little bit different for you guys. What we're doing is we're packing up our old Angular Spade out in R1100 and we've got a brand new one that's been delivered by Google which we're going to unpack and we're going to go through the process of setting it all up today. So let's get started. So Martin, who's assisting me today, has put the cooker into a transport position, meaning that it's now safe to dismantle and return to its box, which is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but that's the next step. So we've dismantled the old AR10 R11 and we've now to install the new one onto our existing pedestal. So the best thing is to open it up. Okay, so we've packed up the old AR10. Now we've got the new Agilus AR10 R1100 ready to on box. In our box we've got all the different elements that Cooper sends. So first off, we have our smart pad holder, which is just a place for us to store our smart pad. Pretty stock standard stuff. Set that to the side. Next up, we have all the cables, our X30, X20, cables for the cooker to the KRC4. Those. Next, in our little phone box, what we have is we just have our miscellaneous pins and adapters, the Cooper supplies. Nothing we need to look at today. Also, we have our brand new Cooper Smart Pad 2 which is actually got the two knobs on the back. It's a lot more lightweight. We'll introduce a new touch screen as well so you don't have a stylus anymore. That's a, that's a fair upgrade actually. Let's just get this one. So the new SparkPad 2 versus the old SparkPad. You can see it's a lot thinner. The two knobs, no more stylus in the handle because it's a new capacitive touch screen. And we've got the USB on the front as well, which is fantastic. Big improvement if you ask me. Right, this one. Then we have... One, but obviously brand new, ready to be installed. Okay, now that we've got everything out of the box, now it's time for the main event, which is the actual industrial arm. We can see the brand new KRZ. In beautiful gloss white. Oh. Okay, that's nice.
We've got Grade of Robotics new KR10, all set up on our pedestal with the compact ARC4 underneath. And now all the flip is the plugging of So we've got two of the cables that run from the arm to the control PC. We've got about our X20 X30. So the good thing about KUKA is that they label everything. So the X30 runs to the robot. So if we grab that, remove our cover. We might just run this one up through our pedestal. So it's a bit tidier. Simply locks in. And then our X20 down here. Clicks when it goes in. Next up, we have our X21, X31. Again, the label, the 20 goes to the control PC. The X21 to X21. And pull down the clasp to lock it in. And then we run the X31 up through our pedestal, remove the cap again. Should only go in one way, that's the wrong way. We have our new two, which connects directly to our control PC. And that, like our other ones, has the X19. Which, we might actually put that one on the outside. Which runs to our X19. Here you've got the little mark that says where to line it up. And that's just a push and click. Now that we've got everything plugged into our Cooper Industrial Arm, into the control PC, get our smart pad wired into the control PC. The last thing is going to get power to it. So we've got our power cable which runs power to both the PC and the arm. It's just a matter of plugging in the X1, which is directly above the X20. It can only go in one way and simply run that to a standard power socket. Now we're ready to turn it on. Okay, so we've plugged in the new robot, but unfortunately we're getting an error where I won't let us move it. I'm pretty sure that we've got to plug in the battery, which would be unplugged for safety reasons. So unfortunately we have to pull out our pad out of the open it up and see if the battery's plugged in, which hopefully it isn't, and then that's just the error we're getting. <laughs> So we've opened up our control PC and just as we suspected, our two primary batteries inside the uh, KRC4. We run up here and we can see that it's not plugged in. If we check our label, it's the A1X305 that uh, KUKA ship out, not plugged in for safety reasons. So if we look at the board here, we can see that that's the 305. It can only go in one way. So if we simply plug that one in, everything else is plugged in and secure, we should be ready to get up and running. Alright, so that's pretty much everything you need when you unbox and set up your brand new KUKA. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video at all, leave a like and a comment down below. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. In my next tutorial, we'll probably install MX Automation on this for a bit of real-time data thing. But until then, see you later.